good morning. Sometimes you get up and you just see there's these sunrises and they're like, oh my God, 6 a.m. Just beautiful, like absolutely stunning to be out here in this weather. So yeah, good morning. I'm gonna wake up slowly and get coffee, but I thought you'd wanna see this. I'm so busting for a piss. So yeah, I'm gonna get on and get that done. This is how I wanna wake up and drink my coffee. Beautiful, still morning, amazing sunrise. Hair by Crazy Meg, but nonetheless. Today we go to Kopi Pee. Oh, good morning. We are en route to a little island group called Koha. And it's going to be our lunchtime stop, which we never ever do. But there's this little group of islands that um, have been recommended to us. We were told, do not miss these out. You have to stop here and go for a swim and go for a snorkel and just enjoy the general vibe. So we're only about nine miles away from them now and it's only 8.45 in the morning. You think we'll be sailing straight past? Why do you think all the mooring boys will be taken? So Nick is uh, making some sausage sandwiches for brunch. It's eight in the morning. <laughs> for breakfast, our second breakfast. <laughs> We've already had a smoothie. And we're going to arrive at these little islands by quarter past ten. So it's going to be less a lunchtime stop and more of a morning tea stop. And then we're going to go to Kopiti, and that's going to be our overnight stop. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you, and a big thanks to our community of patrons. So we approached this beautiful little island group behind us. It looks stunning. I was like gagging to get in the water, and there was only one boy that was um, in, available. And we're tied up. And Nick said, do you want to get another, like a safety line on? Because we're about to get in the dinghy and go around the other side of the island. And as I was doing that, Nick's like, um, are we moving? And the bloody boy just floated off. Just floated off. Like as I was over it, you could actually see the, I don't know, the sinker, the ground tackle, whatever it is, like floating in the water. So fair warning. Even if you're coming to somewhere like this where there's obviously boats on these boys all the time, for God's sake, double check that the boy is bloody well attached to the bottom of the ocean floor. Because so many people would have just picked that up, just jumped in the dinghy and gone for a snorkel and they wouldn't have been attached to anything. I'm disappointed because I was really gagging to get in the water. That being said, I saw quite a few jellyfish, so maybe not. But anyway, that's fine. Onward. To co pee pee. You know what? And that's the whole problem, right? That is a recipe for disaster. A lunch stop. Yeah. Which basically means you're going to get there, you're not going to sit there, you're going to get on the boy and go in the water. That boy is completely free. You can see it's been pulled off of whatever pulled it off. I mean, it's attached to coral or a rock, and it's just that you can see whatever is meant to be underneath it. But it kind of really either it's a one off thing or it, they're just not maintained properly yeah. and this is if you want testament to how you should always dive on mooring boys not just anecdotally you should because realistically that you know if you if that was an evening boy you'd probably be like okay we'll sit in it for an hour we have blown out to sea again but yeah that was uh sobering onward to Kopiti Alright, here we are in Kopipi, we're anchored. Nick's having a little nap. And when we got here about an hour ago, this bay had two other boats in it, a little two one little monohull and one. Hello. It's all getting a bit cozy in here despite the fact this bay is ginormous. It's like that herd mentality. You just go for where the other boats are anchored without, you know, giving it too much thought. Anyway, whatever, we're only here for a night, it doesn't really matter. They're all behind us as well, so 
If they drag, won't be onto us. Won't you miss the ones you know? I'll be here, hanging on, waiting for your call. Seems like time as a wave passing by, leave a mark in our mind. Nick and I were just saying how absurdly lucky we are that this is our view and that we're here in Thailand on our beautiful boat. It's, uh, there's definitely pinch me moments and this is one of them. Well, that was a bit of an eventful start to our day. We uh, raised the anchor and then had no steering and I'm like, mm, okay. We seem to be heading back towards all the other anchored boats instead of out of the bay. So we just quickly dropped the anchor again. Luckily we're only in I think about 12 meters of water. I think it's just not structured. So it's, 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 it's somewhere in here. Okay. So it won't go to port at all? It won't to port now. Which way won't it turn? It won't turn to port. Okay, try it to port now. Try it to port. Try it to port. I want to see where it's at. All right. All right, that's that's where so you can see here that it won't go further to port. Okay, is the boat stable? Yes, and also I've got an anchor alarm on, so. Okay. You found it? Yeah, it's uh, one of these panels. The floor panels have collapsed. Ah. Uh. Yep. 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 The steering bag. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Well done, us. So yeah, we're letting Seawind know so that they can. I think Nick said that the. Um, oh, maybe you can say the camera. Nick, did you tell everyone what the issue was? That, no, you didn't. that our lockers have false floors, and they have to have false floors because if you want to get to underneath the lockers in the stern of the cockpit, is the tie rod system, and it's a big stainless steel bar that essentially ties the two rudders together. The lockers in the forward part the locker floors they have small tabs and those tabs hold the, the base of the floor and essentially one of the tabs failed you the, found that the other day i found it the other day i'm like what where did this come from and i kept it i'm like i'll find out where that comes from <laughs> and what it is it's just that tab failing essentially the vibration of the boat or the motion yesterday at anchor just caused the floor just to drop at yeah. about an inch not even that just an inch but it was enough for that drop to actually foul the end cap of the steering system, yeah. which essentially meant that as you try to steer to port, uh, the end cap of the tie rod just was bound by it. Yeah. What well, is essentially a, a two inch by half inch tab, you lose your steering. Well, it's, it's, it's like tiny little things with big consequences. It's the same with the um, rod screw coming out of the master. Track, yeah, and that's the whole thing about, but you know what, we've been living on boats now for a very, very, very long time more often than not it's exactly what it is you know something ridiculously small causes a whole heap of we had one small component failure in our water maker which essentially was just a, a, an elbow joint lost the water maker for a week yeah. screw backs out lost the mainsail tab falls off lose our steering it's not like there's a whole repository of oh this has happened therefore it's this there's just such minor random things it's actually chasing the problem that causes the issue you're like it's taking me an hour to try and find out where these screws come from or why there's this binding yeah. i don't think therese what would you say on this i don't think this is a beginner's boat oh god no this is a complicated boat i feel very very comfortable now in knowing where you know what's behind panels and where to look but honestly i think if you remember back to the videos that we made back in probably september last year when we were just taking this boat down with nikki and jason it felt at that time that we had just bitten off far more than we could chew and honestly at this point i am becoming more comfortable with diagnosing issues if not fixing them my only take home i would give you if by any chance you're a c1 1370 owner or if you are buying a new catamaran and you're, you're dealing with c zone and you're dealing with a new model just i know we didn't do this and it's kind of like yeah learn from this spend a year getting to know the boat don't just buy it and whiz off around the world because you will find these problems and they will be far far more difficult to diagnose underway when things happen like this we just work well as a team and i kind of think that that is 
that's a good thing, right? You know, get the boat stable, make sure you're not going to hit anything. One gets the anchor down, one monitors this, the other one jumps in, blah, blah, blah. Then you just go through, where is it? Why is it not working? Is it one rudder that's jammed? Is it two rudders that are jammed? If it's two rudders, it can't be both rudders jammed. So if neither goes, it's got to be the tie rod. Now let's take it all apart. What's the collective noun for jellyfish? A swarm of jellyfish. Okay, can someone in the comments please tell me, because we've been seeing these jellyfish like everywhere since we, I don't know, in the last maybe 50 miles. And what are they? What species are they? Are they poisonous, dangerous, venomous, stingy? Do they sting you? Will they kill you? I'm Australian, so as far as I'm concerned, like everything <laughs> is potentially deadly. But um, I have tried Googling and I can't work out what kind of jellyfish these are. So please, someone in the comments, tell me, should I be scared of them? If I accidentally rush against one, will I die a horrible, painful death? Here we are on Koh Hong, which is only about 10 miles away from Phuket. And we've actually been here before. In 2019, you may recall, all those many years ago, Nick and I chartered out of Phuket. That's just a little bit of wake from a passing boat. And this was the first anchorage that we came to. And we have very, very fond memories. So we thought, why not go back and have a little visit? And yeah, we've just anchored up for lunch. Nick's gonna cook something, no doubt. I don't know, he's got something up his sleeve. And a little bit later, we're gonna go and explore the Hong. This is called Ko Hong, and Hong means, what does it mean? I've gone blank. It's like a lagoon. Yeah. Okay, but otherwise I'm just going to settle in and enjoy the view. It is absolutely spectacular. We've got some chicken satays to grill, and we're going to have chicken satay, and we have some salad. We've got some rotis that Teresa's going to cook, and some prawns. boat has not just pot plants on the back but a bloody helicopter. <laughs> I looked it up, apparently you can charter that boat for from $650,000 a week. It is, I think, the hottest day we've had yet. It just feels so humid and still. We just checked the water tanks and we had 19%. <laughs> and our batteries were down to like 40 percent so we thought well we need to run the water maker let's put the engines on one engine on and run the water maker and um we have a big problem i need to get this sorted out now another hose fitting has exploded Jesus. and everything is soaked in here this to this look at this this is just bollocks straight fitting like there's there's no barbs here right it is a pressurized system and to use a straight piece of stainless steel to join two hoses this is a pressure fitting they've used right it's completely smooth it's completely rusted on the inside this is not what you use to join hoses together you just use this they're barbed fittings for they're barbed fittings for a reason thankfully phil harper gave us a spare double-ended brass barbed joint Oh, I've got a cold. Nick's just recovered from a chest infection. He's still not 100%, so we've kind of been convalescing for the last week. Um, good place to do it though. We are on this stunning island called Ko Yao Yai. We've been in this anchorage for a week now, us. And I thought a week was a long time to spend in an anchorage, but there's two other boats who were here before us and they're still here. So the three of us have just been like sat here all week and we don't want to leave. We're just so happy here. We're slowly running out of food and there's a 7-Eleven on the island and that's it. So the only problem is that uh, the water, although lovely, is like 
swarming with jellyfish. Sometimes there's bloody dozens of them and then sometimes there's like, you can't see any. So yeah, we just braved the water, went for a quick swim. To be fair, I, uh, I've had a couple of jellyfish close encounters in the last week and I don't think they sting or at least I haven't had any stings from them, but still. I come from Australia, we're, we're wary of the wildlife. <laughs> My dad came out to visit us for a week and a half, so we've had a bit of a break actually from filming and, well, haven't had a break from editing, but I've had a break from filming um, because I just wanted to spend some time with my father. So it was really nice having dad here for a few days and for him to come sailing with us on the boat and get to see a little bit of our lifestyle. And, you know, I think in a different life, dad would have been quite happy to live on a boat. In fact, I know that he would have been. Um, so the fact that he got a little glimpse into this lifestyle is really special. He's gone back to Australia now and Nick and I have been fighting off this chest infection for the last four or five days. And yeah, now we have to start turning our attention to taking the boat back into Phuket um, and then getting her ready to ship to Turkey. That's happening like next weekend, so we're gonna have to start thinking about actually getting the boat ready. We've just been in like chill recovery holiday mode. We're celebrating the end of our time in not just Thailand, but in Southeast Asia. We'll probably never come here on a boat again. I mean, never say never, but it's not in our five year plan, put it that way. And we've just, it's been such a special experience. And I can see, you know, we've sat here every day and we've said, I can totally see why boats end up in Southeast Asia and then just don't feel the need to go anywhere else. It's just such a special cruising ground. So yeah, we're just kind of enjoying the last few days here in this anchorage and then we'll be heading back to Phuket to get Ruby Rose 2 ready to ship. Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. Our canopy's up. We got this canopy up on like day one, I think, as soon as we got here. We're like, all right, time to get this bloody canopy up and running. And uh, she's massive. She's like, as Nick said in an earlier episode, like an actual marquee. But I tell you what, it's, it's amazing to have this shade because A, it, well, it cools the entire boat down because it's so big. It casts so much shade, but it doesn't cast any shade onto the um, coach roof. So our solar panels are still in the sun, but also it creates like a, another living area out here. And it's so nice. And this is the coolest part of the boat because obviously if we didn't have this shade here, we wouldn't be able to sit out on the foredeck. There's no way. Um, so we're out here in the morning, we're out here during the day, we're out here in the evening, and it's just so nice. And it keeps our cabin really cool as well. Those opening hatches are our cabin, and it keeps the saloon cool. It's amazing. We are totally in love. So absolutely convinced that that was like one of the best things we've done for the boat. how thrilled I am about this whole situation. <laughs> Look how perfect that bread is. Look. Oh man. So happy. So we made it, we made it to Phuket. We have covered 1,454 nautical miles at an average speed of 6.6 .6 knots. Had an amazing time, very, very glad to be here. It is steamingly hot. There is something very lovely about feeling aircon on my sweaty back. I will be heading back to uh, Vietnam in about two weeks. I've got three or four weekends of working with uh, doing the surgery for the kids. So that is the end of this episode. Apologies for my wig. It is, uh, needs quaffering. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Apologies for also for the sweaty mess, but yes, 1500 nautical miles and I do think we can probably both agree that this boat I think we've really kind of like yeah we've, 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 we've broken it in and I think I'm very comfortable now in not so much just sailing over also 
if X goes wrong, how do we fix it? If this goes wrong, how do I fix it? I kind of understand a whole lot more about the engine bays, about the plant machinery and other bits and bobs. In the meantime, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our wonderful channel, and I will see you all next week. Take care, goodbye.